yeah, this is the Bang Bang Rail. Uh, please press the like button and subscribe. I was, uh, I see the uh, video last night with Matt Legg and Norman Butland. Yeah, good. I had to laugh. He's so funny, Norman, and he's, he's like, he don't let anybody get a word in their ways, but he's fantastic. He's got a heart of gold, you know, and he means exactly what he says is, is, is what he is, yeah. He's done 10 years uh, for shooting, and since that time, he's not been, he's not been in any trouble, only fighting, you know, but everyone got to look after themselves as such, yeah. Um, I'm, I can't understand that me and him, how we, me and him never met in the unlicensed uh, fighting scene, uh, perhaps it's because uh, I was in prison, maybe. Or I remember seeing him with Roy Shaw, at the Royal Shaw belt, um, but maybe, I don't know if I was if I was away then, I'm not quite sure. Um, but it seems it does seem strange that we really never met. I never really heard nothing of him. The only time I heard about him is when uh, I see him with Roy Shaw and get the belt, yeah. And after that, I've been watching it on on, on YouTube, his fights and all, all, and yeah, he was a really really high character. I don't know how he was. What he must be small as he what was he five ten five eleven, a bit big man. I mean massive shoulders. You know what I mean? He, he, I mean if he hit you on the chin, you'd be in trouble. But. He never was, he used to really punch too much on the chin. He used to always hit people around the obliques, around the solar plexus, around there, bash them up around the bottom, around the abdominals, because that's the worst place to get hit. And once you, once you take all your oxygen out of someone, that's it, they're finished. Uh, you know, and anyway, I liked, I liked um, um, the way he was talking about uh, kids. You know, don't get get yourself in, in any sort of trouble. You've got to be mugs if you go in prison, which is co correct. You've got to be mugs for going out robbing people, which is correct. You've got to be mugs for going out knifing people. That is that's well, that's, that's absolutely crazy. But um, in my times, uh, in the sixties and seventies, there was a lot of knife crime then. Um, but it wasn't so. It wasn't like ten a day or what five a day. It was like one now and again. Uh, but it was knife crime was about then, you know, and I know the people around my areas that used to carry knives all the time, and they used to always use, especially standing knives. Uh, standing knives used to be one of the tools that they used to use, uh, and carpet knives, yeah, that was more than a, just a, a straight knife, because a standing knife, carpet knife, and all them sort of things didn't really used to plunge, if it did used to plunge. I mean, I got... Um, I got cut up in prison uh, with a standing knife. Um, I had a bit of trouble with someone. Uh, they they, they uh, jumped me, four or five handed, held me down, and one cut my tummy open. There's a, I've got a big story about this. Um, I, I've already done it on YouTube. Uh, I will do it again a, a little bit better uh, than what I've done it last time. There's a little bit more to, 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 to say about it. But uh, Norman Button, um, you got to understand, listen, you got to understand crime, yeah? Is, is is a business, you know what I mean? Crime's a business, not crime going out and doing crime's a business, but doing getting caught, it's a business because you get caught, you've got the police, then you've got the solicitors, then you've got the barristers, then you've got the QCs, then you've got the judge, then you've got probation also, get involved, if you get your probation, they're involved, then you've got the judge, judge sentence you, and then you go to prison, you've got the prison officers, You've got the psychologists, you've got the welfare, you've got the doctors, you've got, it goes on and on and it doesn't end, you know. It's a business, isn't it? It's a big, big business. I mean, if there was no crime, there wouldn't be no judges, there wouldn't be no police, there wouldn't be none of that. So, in a way, it's a job. It's a job and it never stop. I mean, they, they, you know, they're saying crime don't pay. Crime, of course crime don't pay, but without crime, Without crime, there wouldn't be no jobs for them, you know what I mean? But, I, I mean, I'm just, um, I mean, I said before uh, that when I when they asked me, um, I was I was on a big thing called Lad Bible. Anybody want to watch that? Uh, Lad Bible. Uh, I'm on that with a guy called uh, Chris Lambiano, who got done with the craze, you know. Um, yeah, I'm on with that. And they asked me if I got any regrets um, in my life, yeah. And I just said, well, I haven't got no regrets um, because if I had regrets at that time, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done anything. I wouldn't have gone on to arm robberies. I wouldn't have gone out hurting people. I wouldn't have done all that, yeah? Um, being in prison, coming out, doing the exact same thing, that's not regret. 
I'm not, I've got no regrets. But me getting the IPP, uh, that was the biggest regret of me being put in prison that I've ever, ever experienced. Um, one, you, you've no idea when you're getting out. Uh, you, you know, I mean, I got a two and a half year IPP and I'm still on it now, you know, uh, 21 years later. So, you know, it's it's a sentence uh, that they give you and it's a frightening sentence. It's really, really frightening, you know. It's kept me well, well out of trouble. It's kept me well out of trouble. I don't want to go back in prison, you know, at all, you know. Um, but there are a lot of people in prison for IPPs. Uh, a lot of people in there for silly sentences and they're still in there because they won't do the courses, uh, the psychology courses. I mean, I would have liked to see Norman uh, talk about that, about the courses that people have got to do in prison to get out, you know. Um, prison's about, it is about uh, learning your lesson. It is about taking responsibilities and, you know, but... Obviously, that's a job, so so, so then, pe then people need to be kept kept in their job. But it's got to a stage now that a lot of, a lot of psychologists in prison are, um, are pulled away from there because there's not enough, it's not the money's no good or something like that anyway, but uh, there's still, so there's still a lot of IPPs in there. Um, I mean, I think they've, they've squashed um, IPPs now. Uh, there's no such thing as an IPP. Well, there is because there's people in there uh, doing an IPP sentence. But the only way they can get out, they must do their courses. You've got to do your courses. And the most important course they've got to do is a thing called CALM. And that's controlling your anger and learning to manage it. You've got to learn, you must do that course. You know, and psychology, um, believe me, uh, when I was in prison, I thought psychology was a waste of time. You know what I mean? You waste of time. Silly things they ask you, silly things you've got to do. You've got replay, you rob reason, things like you don't, you know, it's ridiculous, you think. But when you come out of prison and you realise the triggers that they give you and the, what is it? It's a, yeah, and, 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 and it's the skills that they give you, yeah? They give you skills, skills you don't think that never work, yeah? But these skills work. You know, so you've got challenging your thoughts. So you wake up in the morning, you challenge all your thoughts. You know what I mean? What am I doing today? Shirt sure, for no, that man's a good idea. If I go like that, you know, then you've got your triggers. You know, you've got people, you've got money. You know, the triggers. You know, and and you've got uh, the so it just goes on and on and on and on. But the most important one is consequences. You know, the consequences, mate, some of these things are unbelievable. Uh, but I always, I always challenge, I, I like the, the, the one that says you challenge your thoughts, yeah? Uh, you challenge your thoughts every morning when you wake up, every every night, in the day. You just challenge your thoughts, you know, you just, what's the point? What's the point? If I get myself nicked, I'm going to go in prison and uh, I'll get in trouble. But then you've got to think about, well... If I go in prison, I'm giving everybody a job, but it's not about that, is it? It's not ever, It's not about that. You don't want to go in there in prison, you know, and there's so many kids. There's so many kids in prison today. Uh, in my times in the 50s and 60s, um, being sexually abused, uh, molested and physically abused, one of the things that just happened. It just happened, it just it happened and people just shrugged it off. It's just one of the things that went on, yeah? Now, it's got, it's gotten a lot worse, um, again, because of all the foreign nationals coming into this country. Um, you know, they believe that what they do is correct. It's all wrong, you know what I mean? Uh, to, to, to get all the kids and take them in and, and make sure and we get money on them and all that. It's, it's shocking, mate. It's shocking the way things are going. And it's only going to get worse. They've got to shut their borders off. They've got to shut it off, mate. Just shut it off now uh, and just start sending them back. Sending them back to their countries, you know. Or, as I said before, you've got all these prisons that are empty. Put them in prison. Put them in the prisons until they can, until you're satisfied that they're, they're going to be okay to be let out on the street. You know, it's the same. I mean, 
you got Bronson. I know I'm going one thing to another. You got Bronson. You know, okay, what's he done? He nicked twenty pound. He nicked twenty pound on the robbery. He's bashed a few prison officers up. He's been very subversive. Uh, they don't like that. You know, they don't like that. I think a lot of it is that his voice. They don't like his voice. I think that frightens them. The voice frightens them. That that is is quite intimidating. You know, that frightens them. The voice. I mean, yeah. I look at I look at things, um, and I say to myself, "What has he done? What has he done to deserve being in prison that long?" You know what I mean? But you know, uh, he's been out once. He didn't like it. He come back in prison. Being, you know, and to go out in the street after 30 odd years or 40 odd years in prison is, is, is not easy. I mean, when I say that, you know, um, after I come out of mine, my IPP and the one before that, um, and the one before that, I come out of prison and it, it's, it changes. For that split second, it's changed, you know, everything's different, but you shouldn't get back into it again. Um, People keep saying he needs to go uh, into somewhere uh, in the countryside and just left alone. But surely that's got to be worse, isn't it? Surely uh, you, you putting someone in the Hilton Hotel, million miles away, um, got everything he wants, is no different than about being in prison. He's still in prison because he can't go nowhere. All he's doing is living in a, in a lovely environment, but he can't go nowhere. You know, so I feel that be that may be even worse than than you know. Just I I feel that he's got to be under supervision for a bit of time, uh, and that's really that's one of the one of the ones he's got to be under supervision. Yeah, maybe for a year, a couple of people, three people looking after him, making sure he's okay. You know, taking him out now and again for dinners and and things like that and. You know, just giving him something normal to do rather than lock him away and let him do his paintings and all that. What's all that about? You know, he's, he's still locked away, isn't he? As such, you yeah? know. I know, and you, and you look at, uh, what is it? Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> it's like Silence of the Lambs, isn't it? You know, where he's saying, all I want to see is a tree and a stream and, and animals. And all that, it's like silence of lambs, isn't it? You know, so, uh, nah, that ain't Charles Bronson, mate. That ain't Charles Bronson at all, he's a human being. He's 70 years of age. He needs to get out and he needs to live his life, not be banged up again, not be locked in, a, in an environment where there's no one around him. He needs people around him. He needs to come back to it, yeah? And, in, and, the, and the, there are certain people out there, uh, everybody's, Everybody's going to fire after him to do a podcast, to do a video and all that. Who's going to be the best one to talk to him? You know, because sometimes even now when I see people talk about Charles Bronson and saying, yeah, you know, once he gets something in his in his head, he, 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 he's, he, you can't take it away from me. He will keep, he will, that would be one of the things that he, he, he can't. If he says he's going to do something, he does it. Doesn't matter how much you say, don't do it, don't do it, he'll do it. That ain't no good. You can't put that on, that ain't no good. You can't, I've just said it. I shouldn't have really said that. But you can't really put that on a video or a podcast because, you know, the, these people watching these podcasts, watching these videos 24-7, mate, you know, and they're going, yeah, you can't let him out, mate. He's like, he just said, said it's, he's a bit thing. So they've got to stop that. And it's the same, who are they going to get? Uh, I don't know, what, English? Sean Atworth, Atworth, Atworth. Uh, there's a load, there's such a load of people out there that could do a good, good, good video podcast about about um, about him, about uh, Charles Bronson. But I think one of the best ones to do, uh, do one would be Matt Legg because Matt Legg knows his family. You know, Matt Legg knows his mum, Matt Legg knows his brothers and everything, yeah. Matt Legg's, uh, I feel, would be the one to interview. Um, interview, yeah, I think I think he, that Brunson needs someone like Matt Legg to interview him, because Matt Legg's quite nice. He's a nice guy. 
he's uh, he's been there. He's you know he, he knows how it is. You know he hasn't he, he he hasn't done no prison sentence. He doesn't really understand prison. Uh, that's that's a good thing that he doesn't really understand prison. He's been in prison in Norman Butler for what I don't know a couple of months. You know, and, and and he hasn't really that 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 is enough that shook him up. He doesn't want no more that man. It shook him up so much. You know what I mean? And not like me. I was in prison. Uh, ball stool, wide piece, big sentences, big sentences, and a big sentence. You know, and then another sentence. You know, you think, oh, that should be enough, and it is enough at the end of it. The IPP is enough for me finished. But why do you have to go for all that? Lot? Why do you have to go for all that? Just say to yourself, nah, enough's enough. I've had it. I wish I had. I wish I had the that that what Matt Leg had. I wish I had what Butland, you know, Norman had. I wish I had that as well. You know, go in prison for a long time, come out and go, oh, that's it. I ain't doing no more. You know, uh, Matt Leg was he? I don't know where he got six months, eight months, something like that. I don't, you know, and you know, I've got friends that have been in prison for six months, three months. You know. And they haven't got no idea, they haven't got a clue. People who do short sentences, they haven't got a clue about prison. The only thing about short sentences that it takes, it seems to take longer to get out of a short sentence than it does a long sentence. Because it's the same uh, when you've been in prison for 10 years, eight years, you just do it every day as it comes. Every day, you just do it. It's one of the things you just, you know, train, eat, bed, sleep. Up, do your job, train, eat, bed, sleep. You know, and it's this one of the things that's go out of the head about being out the outside in the outside world. But people are doing short sentences and they've got maybe a year to do all they're thinking about is getting out every day. Oh, I can't get out. No, well, and that is what they think about. I think it's the short sentences are a lot harder than, than the big sentences, I feel. You know, um, when they told me that I got parole on my IPP. And they said, you're going out in six weeks. Believe me, that six weeks was like six years. Every day, I was counting days, hours, minutes. Honestly, seriously. It's not, um, people think, well, you know, you've done 10 years, you've got, 18 months, you've got eight months left to do out of it. And it ain't like that, mate. All these people doing big sentences. When they've got X amount of time to do, it, it drags for them and it becomes odd because they shit themselves they're thinking about what happens if something happens why you know I mean what happens uh, am I going to do this am I going to do that if someone comes to me am I going to get violent am I going to do that am I going to lose my license am I not going to get out on the street oh you know it's like it's, that's, that's, the, that's what you think about but um, I feel that um, that he should get out um Mr. Uh, Alvador, whatever his name is, uh, you know, um, I feel that he should get out. He's had enough Bronson. He's done enough time. Um, you know, and he's saying that it, the kids sell mugs to get put in prison. And it's now, it's right at the very end, he, he realises that he's wasted so much of his life. You know, and what for? What's he, what for? Okay, um, I feel uh, that when he gets out, the amount of people are going to be wrapped around him uh, for interviews. This is why, this is why he's got to, he's got to be under supervision because obviously he might explode. I don't. Uh, I'm saying the same things I'm saying. People want to say, but just leave that out. Yeah, just just let just let him get out. Yeah, just let him get out enough and just live his life, whatever he's got left. Yeah, and uh, live it nice. You know. But under supervision, it's what it way it is. We all were under supervision. When I got out, same thing. Hostel, you're still under supervision. Six months supervision. You've got to go out. You've got to come back in at a certain time. God, the worst thing about hostels, mate, is the fact that people are in there. They're not all IPPs. They're not all lifers. They're not all long termers. You get lots and lots of short termers in there that are coming out, finishing off. They've got no money. Hostel. And they're going straight out, back at it on the street, you know, robberies, burglars. And so you're laying in bed and all you keep hearing is police up and down the stairs giving people recalls and nicking people. 
and it frightens the life out of it, even though you ain't done nothing. You're still petrified, you know, of the, okay, all that game, you know what I mean? You're fighting, oh, up, 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 up and down the stairs, you think, oh, what? And that was the worst part about my hostel. Other than that, pff, I didn't have no trouble with hostel at all. Um, I love my hostel, you know, didn't love it. It was a nice area, Alien Broadway. I lived about another mile down the road, Acton, so I could go and see my mum every day for my mum's dinners. He wish you were my dinners. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come back, but that's going to be the same thing with Bronson. You know, they were going to maybe put him somewhere uh, where he can walk about, walk about, but under supervision. Like, he, he, even places like Ely, Broadway, I don't know what, where was he, Woodhill? I don't know where Woodhill is, you know what I mean? But uh, go somewhere where he can congregate, walk about, you know, go places, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's no good sending him miles out in the woods in a big wooden house and wooden hut and living out there, mate. Nah. He go mental, mate. He go mental. Anyway, this is Bang Bang Rail. Um, now I've kept on and gone on a bit. Um, please like and subscribe. And good morning. I'm going to go training in about 20 minutes. Um, I'm feeling strong. I'm putting weight back on. Yeah, mate, I'm feeling good, James. Every morning I train. Well, I ain't even had a day off yet. You know, I've been only doing it for four days, but um, I'm very tight, body's tight. Um, I know I'll get bigger by the T-shirts I put on. I put, what, do you know what I do, don't I? When I start training, I get T-shirts that don't fit me, that are too big for me, and I put them in a the drawer, same as jeans. I put jeans, my waist is about 44 maybe even more than that now, yeah. So I put a pair of jeans that, that are really tight, not, or sorry, baggy on me, really 44 waist, 48 waist, put them in the drawer with the t-shirts, yeah, and I don't touch them for about four to six months. And then, bump, I put them on. Do you know what I mean? I used to do that when I was on the voids. God, when I was on the voids, mate, when I was on the voids, I went mad. I went to about, I don't know, what, I went to about 21, 22 stone over a course of maybe, what, a year. Taking so many drugs, I didn't know what, I was just putting them anywhere in my body, yeah. Jab here, jab there, anywhere. You deal, even putting me deltoids. My deltoids was that like, yeah, massive. You know, you just couldn't even feel it. And the greens. Not the little ones, they were greens, big long greens, shoop, straight in. Yeah, man, and, and, and always, you know, and it, you get that sort of like warm feeling, the warmth, you know, when you're lifting something, you go, Bzzz! the warmth, it's like hydraulic, you know. I loved it, I can't do it now, but um, I'm still I'm gonna start creatine, I'll take some creatine. Uh, I know it's a water, it's a water base, but I wanna start now, the creatine. I want to, I don't want to get too muscular, too big. I just want to get look good for the summertime, you know what I mean? Because now I've been looking at myself, uh, I'm going a bit, you know what I mean? I'm going a bit, it's the age, isn't it? You get a certain age, you get under the chin here, and, and all that, the belly starts going a bit dodgy, the muscles start going wrinkly, you know, but uh, just keep up, mate, don't stop it. And there's people out there, yeah, that are even younger than me, that just give up. Don't give up. Make sure you do something. You know, it's motivation, mate. You've got to motivate yourself. It's the hardest part of the world because it's different now. Years ago, no one had nothing to, mo to, 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 make, to make them want to go out and do it. Now, I'm sorry, you got, years ago, you wanted to go out and do something because there was nothing to keep you in. Now, Netflix, this flicks, that flicks, you know. Uh, well, I got a fire stick and all these things. You turn it on, you sit down there, you can watch, do whatever you like. I've got seven to eight hundred uh, films on my fire stick. I've got all sorts of things, box, everything on my fire stick. So you can sit there all day and just go through it. Boxes, you've got boxing, you've got a thousand boxing fights. You can watch every fight you want to watch. And do you really want to get up? And go to the gym? No, you don't. No, you don't. You want to sit there, 
cups of coffee, cups of tea, bake your sandwiches, bit of grub, drive the wife mad or the girl mad, don't move, start getting all of a sudden. After a couple of months, you start feeling it. Ooh. Ooh. Can't sleep. You're on over in a bed, tossing and turning. Oh, you come up get in the right bad way. And that's why I loved now to motivate myself. I got all that. I go, nah. in the morning, get up, bowl of porridge, you know, maybe uh, all your porridge, none of that other crap. Just mix up normal porridge, bananas. I always eat my my I always eat my berries before anything, yeah? Eat my berries, then later when I have my banana and my porridge and then and I'm ready I might have I might even have a sandwich, not a sandwich, well yes a sandwich, but one slice of bread and a, whatever. And then boom, gym. And then come back and get into the protein, a bit of protein. I'm gonna start uh buy myself a bit of protein and stuff. Uh, I bought loads of fish yesterday and chicken. Uh there's proteins for you. I love all that, and they're going to start. In, I'm just going to start getting into that sort of thing. Um, I'm aching. I'm really, really aching. Even though, even though, listen, you must, right? You must. Whenever you train, you must stretch. Regardless, you listen. Stretch is such a boring thing, yeah. And it takes fifteen minutes, twenty minutes to stretch properly. And it's after workout, you think, oh, no, nah, I don't want to stretch. And before workout, you go, oh, no, nah, I don't want to stretch. But you've got to stretch. You've got to make them muscles long. At the minute, they're very tight. You sleep at night time, they get tight, 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 tight. When you wake up, you go, oh. You ever see lions, dogs, cats? They always, oh, they always stretch. Oh, they always stretch. And they don't lift no weights. They're always stretching, yeah. And you look at them, they're all cut up, defined, you know, all muscular, isn't it? Because all they do is stretch, they stretch their muscles out long. They're running around and stretch their muscles. Yeah, you've got to do the same thing as what an animal does. Because we're animals, really. You know, and get yourself, well, anyway, I'm keeping on about, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just talking about anything in a minute. Anyway, this is Bane Bane Rail. Please press the like button and subscribe, and good morning. Lovely.